Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave, and last week I showed you my top five favorite paint colors for watercolor. And today I am gonna show you my top five must-have paint colors in a palette. And these five colors, in my opinion, would be perfect for a limited palette. And I'm gonna do some mixing to show you why I've chosen these five colors. So let's jump in and get started. Okay friends, so once again, I am painting in my Etcher Lab Cold Press Watercolor Sketchbook. I have these little stamp outlines from Christy Rice's Swatching Stamps set. And then I have my big palette here and I'm gonna show you which of the colors in my Ultimate Palette I would pick for my limited palette must-haves. So if you are in the market for picking out a limited palette of tube colors, these are ones I would suggest. Now they're gonna be from different brands, so it might be a little difficult, but I am gonna try and give you other alternatives to maybe a single brand that I've used before or colors to look out for. So when you are painting with watercolor with tubes, it can get quite expensive if you end up buying a ton like what's in this palette. Fortunately, my job requires me to have a lot of watercolors and I get sent things from companies to test out. So that is why I have so many, but I don't recommend everyone having this many watercolors. It's just insane and unnecessary. So I'm gonna show you my top five that I would pick if I was just starting out with tubes. Okay, so the first color I would pick is a red. Now for reds, you want a limited palette that will be good for mixing other colors. Now, hmm, reds can be tricky because I would actually pick a pink and a red for my limited palette. If you're thinking, if I'm only having five colors and I want some primary colors, I would double up on my pinks or reds and blues. Yellows, I feel like you don't need to go uh, double up on because you can create different yellows but I, I would definitely do two, maybe two different types of reds or blues. It depends. This is where it becomes tricky. I'm wondering if I should, Ooh, okay, I'm, I, I swear I'm gonna make sense. Okay, I'm changing up my mind a little bit here. So the first color I'm gonna show you, which I would pick, would be quinacridone rose or permanent rose from Windsor & Newton. So the quinacridone rose here that I'm swatching today, if you saw my last video of my top five favorite colors, this was in my top five. And it's just my favorite pink, okay? It's bright and bold, but also when you use it a light value like this, when you see I'm going dark to light, it's so soft and beautiful. But one benefit of using this color as your red in your limited palette is you can actually make red. The red right here, I actually made with quinacridone rose. So I'm gonna show you how I did these mixtures after, um, but I would definitely use a pink or even a magenta as one of my reds in my palette, okay? The next one I'm going to show you is a yellow. So yellows, I don't find that I need to have a lot of yellows in my palette. This palette, I have a few yellows, like at least six. You don't need that many yellows. I find like a good old cadmium yellow, which this one is from Paul Rubens. It's a cadmium yellow medium. Works just fine, okay? And I'll show you how to mix these as well to kind of get different yellows. But just kind of like a run of the mill, cadmium yellow is perfectly good. But you do have to be careful because the, the, here is a cadmium yellow deep sorry, it's in my palette, cadmium yellow deep, and it tends to be a bit more orangey. So you wanna make sure that you're not getting something that's too warm. Um, so like a medium or just like a cadmium yellow is good. Even like, like a Windsor lemon from Windsor & Newton is pretty decent, but I always find myself just grabbing the cadmium yellow. I don't know why. It's a little bit more on the opaque side, but I've always just gravitated more towards that. Not sure why, but I'll show you in mixtures how you can use it. Okay, the next color I would pick, hmm would be 
Ooh, tricky. Okay. Would probably be the phthalo blue red shade from Michael Harding. So there's actually lots of phthalo blues in different brands, but it's kind of like your regular old blue. This one is the red shade. It looks a little bit more on the cool side, but it works and it's great for mixtures. Okay. So I'll show you what I mean in a bit, but I feel like it's just a really good run of the mill blue. Um, for other brands, I wouldn't go necessarily like if you're going to do two blues, I got to really think this through because I'm I right now I'm on the uh, on the fence with either putting another blue or a green in my palette. I'm thinking green. Because one thing that you could do is have like a cool and warm blue, like an ultramarine would be a warm blue because it's really hard to mix a warm blue. We're going to try and I'm going to go with a green in my top five just because for what I paint. Um, but if you do want the option to have like a true ultramarine, like a warm blue, I would put that in my palette as well. But for this purpose, for this video and it being my own preference, we're going to do a green. We're going to get to that. But a phthalo blue um red shade so there's red shade and green shade red shade is warmer green shade is cooler green shade is a little bit more kind of like a turquoise so i like the red shade a bit because it's a little bit warmer um but that's just my my opinion okay so there's that one then i would also pick what would i pick i'm gonna pick a green i'm gonna pick hooker's green this hooker's green is from Michael Harding. Okay, love, love, love this hooker's green. I love a good olive green and all it, but we can actually make an olive green and this is a really great green to mix. It's dark, but we can lighten it up um, and we can make it a little bit more yellow, a bit more blue. Like there's so many things you can do with this green. I highly recommend it. So the Michael Harding um, hooker's green also Windsor Newton hooker's green is really nice too this one I just feel like it looks a bit more natural but um, either will do and then for our last color I'm, this is where I'm on the fence like I love the red the permanent red by Shinhan and I would probably put that in my palette but I'm wondering if I should go ultramarine because it just makes a lot of sense. You know what? I'm going to go with this top four and I'm going to see what I can mix. And then we might throw in a black or a Payne's gray in there as well. I don't know. Okay. So let's just go about mix how I would mix these four colors to create my must have palette. So like I said, you want your primary colors. And the reason why I chose pink is because you can actually make red with this pink. So this is quinacridone rose. And all you need to create a red, like this is it super saturated. Like this is just quinacridone rose here. Look how deep this is. And because of the way I applied it here, it looks more pink, but look how deep that gets. Okay. Now, if I added some yellow to this, you'll actually get more of like a bright red. This is a bit more orangey red, kind of like a cadmium red. But like, look at that. You can make red with quinacridone rose. I'm gonna add a bit more of the, the quinacridone rose and you get this like beautiful cherry red. I'm gonna lighten it up a bit. And so you can make a red. If you really just want a true red, the one I would suggest would be this one by, um, Shinhan, which is permanent red, see that? But like, look how close that is to these mixtures. It's great. So you really don't need like a permanent red. But, um, you just need a pink and mix it a little bit with your cadmium yellow and you're good. But like, it's amazing. I love it. Another reason why I choose the quinacridone rose is because it mix beautiful purples, okay? You're not gonna get the same purple mixture with a true red. Mixing purples, I always recommend you use a pink. So this pink is great for that. So I'm just going to show you. I'm going to mix pink, or sorry, our quinacridone rose with the phthalo blue. Which one is it? I have to remember. Yeah, it's this one. <laughs> okay. 
That's too deep, but I'm gonna throw this there later because this kind of gives us that warm blue we want for our ultramarine, uh, I wanna say dupe. <laughs> okay, so you can create a warmer blue that way. But let me get my pink so I can do half and half. And you can create this beautiful purple. Okay, it's pretty dark. Let me just lighten it up a bit. Like, look at that. Okay, and then a little bit more blue, you get this deeper, warmer blue. And then more pink, you can get kind of more like a mauve. Look, look at that. Beautiful. Stunning. Love it. Like, look how beautiful that is. Uh, obsessed. Okay. So that's why I choose red or sorry, why I choose quinacridone rose over red. Um, cause you can mix your red, but you can also mix gorgeous purples. Okay. And then for yellow, my other favorite yellow in my palettes would be yellow ochre. I love the muted kind of neutral yellow color, but you can actually make that. So I'm going to take the purple that I made here. I'm going to add a little bit more blue again to it. So we have this purple and then all you're going to do to make, uh, what's it called? Uh, yellow ochre is add a tiny bit of purple, maybe a bit more red to it. Hold on. There was a bit too much blue in there. Got to find the right the right combination. I also should have cleaned my palette before I did this. Okay, there we go. More yellow. And you can get this beautiful yellow ochre color. Just by adding a little bit of purple to it, which essentially is our phthalo blue and our quinacridone rose half and half. Okay, you can get those yellow ochre colors with this limited palette okay this yellow also is bright enough like it's not dark enough but bright enough that it can resemble like um a sorry like a windsor lemon or a yellow lemon kind of color um and then if you want to get some of those deeper warmer yellows all you have to do is add just a little bit of your pink to it like a tiny tiny bit so i'm going to grab my yellow i'm going to grab a tiny bit of our quinacridone rose and then you have a warmer yellow grab a bit more quinacridone rose that's too much quinacridone rose that's fine you get a beautiful orange and it's just so bold that's a bit too much But you can get that really nice warm yellow with this okay and it's still light enough that it resembles that lemon yellow kind of feel to it um, and it's also just great for mixing other colors okay so back to our phthalo blue um, like I said you can get that kind of warmer ultramarine ish kind of color I feel like I'm leaning a bit here let's just swatch ultramarine okay so this is ultramarine and ultramarine is a pigment in itself. Like it's hard to recreate. You can't really mix an ultramarine. You can make your blue a little bit warmer, but not too, too much warmer. So that's the real ultramarine. Let's try again to kind of recreate this. See if we can. Otherwise we might just have to put uh, an ultramarine in our palette. Cause I haven't filled up that last spot yet. that close like it gets close but not too close if there's a brightness in ultramarine that we're not able to get okay so maybe we would put an ultramarine as our fifth but you don't need an ultramarine it's if you want that like warmer blue but you don't need it I just love that blue but you don't need it um, because you can get tons of other blues just by mixing this so if you wanted a more turquoisey kind of blue um, you just add a little bit of yellow. I'm going to clean up my palette for a second and then I will be right back because this is too hard to mix with all these colors here. All right, there we go. Now my palette's a bit more clean. So I'm going to show you how to make a bit more of like a turquoise kind of blue. So again, 
we got our phthalo blue here. And depending on how much of our yellow we add, you can get a really vibrant green with this blue. You can get like a really light lime kind of green, but then you can also get some more neutral greens just by adding like a little bit of our pink. It's a bit more muted. See that? Like so. Okay, so this blue serves as so many purposes and honestly, like you can make it super dark, super light, but I really enjoy this blue. Okay, and then our green, the reason why I choose green and not just a bunch of primaries, I just, I find myself mixing a lot of greens um, or using a lot of greens in my work. So I like it as a convenience color and a convenience for mixing because I find sometimes mixing the greens, like especially if the amount that I use them, I have to mix a lot. So I find this just a lot easier to just add one color to it rather than having to add blue and yellow and red to get the right neutral green that I want. But let me just show you how beautiful this green mixes with others. And also I find it can make some really nice, um, it can make my favorite colors. So here's Hooker's Green and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and pink, so like our orange. And it will actually make kind of like the moss green from Michael Harding or an olive green. You can mix a little bit more, make it even more um, kind of olivey. Maybe a bit more yellow to it. almost like a green gold. But then you can also add blue, so like our phthalo blue, and get a dark kind of turquoise color. And then also if you add blue and pink to it, we can kind of make our, let me try and do this. So pink, blue, more pink. <laughs> Hold on more pink. So we're going to get purple and then grab that hooker's green and you can kind of make our, uh, what's it called? Oh my goodness. Words. Our perline green. Oh my goodness. Like that. So it's really dark. Hold on. Let me lighten it up a bit. It needs a bit more green, I think. Here we go. You can make perline green, which was one of my favorite colors in my last video. Like that, like we've basically made perline green. Okay, so I just love having this as a convenience color. I just find it a little bit easier to mix. It takes a step out, um, but it's just also a really nice hue to have on its own. Okay. So those are my four top colors. Now for the fifth one, like I said, if you feel like you need that ultramarine because you want to paint with more warmer blues, I would definitely put that in there. But if you wanted something like a convenience color like burnt sienna or burnt umber or a black or a paints gray, you could definitely go that way. But again, you can mix all of these two. Like we just made that pearling green. But if you add more blue to it, more blue you can almost kind of make like a an indigo kind of color or paints gray on its own okay um and then for like a brown like look how pretty that color is oh i like that um for a brown all you have to do is add two contrasting colors so we already have green here i would probably do red or pink we're going to mix there and we get a brown. That's a bit too pink heavy. I would add yellow and you get kind of like this burnt umber or almost like a raw umber shade. Okay. 
maybe a bit more pink, a bit more yellow, a bit more yellow. <laughs> Make it a little bit warmer. And there's burnt sienna kind of. Okay, there's just like so many options and you can mix tons and tons and tons of colors just with these four colors. So I know I originally said five, <laughs> top five colors. You can mix all of these colors with just four and then pick your last kind of convenience color if you want that to be red or a different blue or a black or um, buff titanium is a really beautiful color, which, uh, or you know what? You know what I would suggest actually? And some watercolor artists might disagree with me, white. White, using white in watercolor is not always recommended because you can create these lighter values just using water. But I find that using white adds this extra kind of pastel-y um, bit to it that I don't know, it's just, it's more opaque. It feels pastel, it feels creamy. I, I've been really enjoying white lately, so that might be a little bit of a taboo to say, but like, so here's the light value of that color and then here's it with white. It just looks more opaque and a bit creamier, but it's totally up to you. So those are my top four colors, five if you're including white, um, that I must have in my limited palette. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. So let me know in the comments below, what are your must haves? I'm dying to know um, what you guys think. So please share with us in the comments and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.